Hello, welcome back or to Lady Loves Dead Reads. My name is Jessica and this is the Mid-Year Book Freakout Tag. It is later at night on a Saturday here in July. The lighting's not the best. I'm trying to do my best to work with like lamps and things like that. So Mid-Year Book Freakout is a tag developed by a booktuber. I don't believe they are on booktube anymore, but their name is Eli. And let's just go ahead and get into the questions. First question is, what is the best book that you have read in the year so far? And I have three books to talk about for this question. First is The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mar john mark comer and this is about basically how quickly culture moves and how there's so much pressure for us to be constantly on the go and hurrying through our days and it is from a christian perspective so john mark comer uses a lot of scripture from the bible and things like that to develop his points and I really, really loved this book. This is a book that I used to help myself recover from probably the worst burnout I've ever experienced in my life. Of all the nonfiction that I've read this year, this is for sure the best nonfiction. This year I did reread my favorite book of all time, which is Orlando by Virginia Woolf. It's a modern classic stream of consciousness story. Nobody can really tell anyone for sure what it's about, but it addresses themes of like gender identity and just culture, lots of questions about culture and class. And I reread it as a buddy read with my friend Chelsea at Read Chelsea Read and Destiny. And this reread was my fourth time rereading it. It was probably my least enjoyable experience reading it. I did vlog about it and I will link you up here to the vlogs or down below to the vlogs is my May vlog part two and my June vlog I talk about Orlando. Since that was a reread I did want to choose a book that was a new to me read in the fiction category and so far the best work of fiction that I have read this year is Ripe by Sarah Rose Etter. This is like unhinged women literary horror and it is about burnout. So it's about this woman who works in Silicon Valley and it just addresses burnout. Like she experiences really severe burnout and it is personified as like this black shadow that just kind of follows her around. And I loved this book. I thought it was so well done, super impactful in, in part because I was dealing with extreme burnout at the time that I read it. I actually, I think I read both um, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry and Ripe in the same month um, because I was just getting into a lot of literature on burnout that month and they both made a major impact on me. So these two I would say are the best new to me reads of 2024 so far. Next question, the best sequel that you've read so far this year. And I would have to say when I was looking through um, the series that I've been reading this year, I've read a lot of installments and in series this year. It's been a series heavy reading year for me. And of all of them, I think the best installment that I have read, um, the final volume of The Promised Neverland, which is a manga series. And then I also wanna give some credit to Decaffeinated Corpse by Cleo Coyle, which is book five in the Coffee House Mystery series. A new release you haven't read but want to. I'm not great about keeping up with new releases, to be perfectly honest. I have a handful of writers that I try to follow and stay up to date on. Um, so I was able to find two that were released this year that I haven't read yet but that I would like to. The first is Blue Sisters by Coco Malores, and the second is Intermezzo by Sally Rooney. I don't know what either of these books are about, I just know that I love the writers. So those two. 
most anticipated release for the second half. So the only one that has really been on my radar is the fourth book in the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend, which is a middle grade fantasy series that I love so much. The book four release keeps getting pushed back. Like it got pushed back an entire year. And I think if it goes according to plan, it's set to be released in October of this year and I might reread <laughs> the series leading up to it because I'm really excited for it and I think my friend Cheryl and I are going to buddy read book four when it comes out. My biggest disappointment. My biggest disappointment is The Leftover Woman by Jean Kwok. Jean Kwok is an author, author that I have read from before and have loved her work. She's done some hard-hitting contemporary novels that have been just excellent. Um, and this one I feel like really missed the mark. It was very melodramatic. It felt like a, like a daytime television show. I felt like it catered to some stereotypes around Chinese American immigrants. And I read some reviews on Goodreads of folks who are Chinese American immigrants who found some of this book to be fairly problematic. It is full of exposition, which is info dumping. I literally kind of skimmed through just the last part so I knew how it ended, but I predicted the ending and the ending was so cheesy and like, it's just is not a good book, y'all. And it was really disappointing because this author's other works are good and I feel like I, I, I did really enjoy them and found them to be high quality and this just was not it. Biggest surprise. My biggest surprise this year is a new author that I tried out and the book is called The Jen Waits 100 Years. Shubnam Khan is the name. I went into this having no expectations other than I read the synopsis and it sounded so good and it ended up being so good. I had not heard anybody talk about this. I hadn't read any reviews of the book. I'd never heard of the author. So it was one of those where I'm like, well, let's just give it a shot and see how it goes. And it ended up being a five star read and such a good, lush, complex, layered horror story. Loved it. And I really hope this author comes out with more and they're probably going to be one that I keep an eye on for new releases. New favorite author. There's really only been one author that I've read multiple works of this year that isn't a favorite author from previous years, like is actually a new favorite, and that author would be Della Galton, and she is the author of the Puddle Duck Farm series that I have been reading. Puddle Duck is just a very cozy slice of life, contemporary, litfic, chick flick. I think, I don't like the phrase chick lit, but I guess it's called chick lit. Yeah, one of those low stakes, cozy stories. It's just a feel good read. And I have been reading them on audiobook all year when I feel really stressed out and I need to just escape into a story that feels safe and soothing. And I have read three of the four in the series that are published so far. I don't know if there's going to be more than four books in this series. Um, but yes, I have consistently been reading and enjoying work by Della Galton. Newest fictional crush. I've read awful romances this year. There have only been a handful that I've even finished and even a smaller handful that I have enjoyed. So of those, I picked Roman Kit from Divine Rivals. Divine Rivals is a young adult high fantasy romance and it is about these journalists who are covering a war between gods in this universe and I felt like their romance was so sweet and so believable and Roman Kit was if I had to pick of all the characters that I've read in in romance novels this year I guess would be the one newest favorite character Monstrelio. Monstrelio is this horror novella about a mother whose son dies when he is just a 
like very young. I don't remember if he's a baby or if he's like a toddler, but very young. And she takes a piece of his lung and saves it and this lung grows into a little monster that they name Monstrilio. And it's supposed to be a horror, it's pitched as a horror, but I just fell in love with this little monster. Like he does struggle with a desire and a drive to eat humans. But aside from that, I just found him so lovable and cute. And I don't know what that says about me. Um, but it was a, I enjoyed this a lot. It was a really good read. It covers a lot of conversations about like um, growing into who you are and who you're meant to be despite what your parents try to force you to be. It's a big part of that story. And I just, I thought it was lovely. I loved it. A book that made you cry. The Promised Neverland Volume 20, the very last one. In fact, in the vlog that I do <laughs> where I read it, I'm like crying my eyes out in the vlog. Yeah, I cried not because that volume was particularly sad, but just because it was like the final culmination of everything. And it was overall just a really emotional read with the resolution of certain things between certain characters and certain ideas and like it being the very last one of a series that I loved. So yes, that definitely made me cry. Book that made me happy. Any of the Puddle Duck Farm books have made me very happy. <laughs> Favorite book to movie adaptation? I don't know. I have had very little time spent watching TV or movies this year. I've watched, finally finished The Crown, started watching Supernatural, and saw the movie Back to Black, and that's literally it. That's all that I have watched in this entire year. I just don't prioritize TV. Between working in academia, running a small farm, and trying to stay up to date on booktube, I just don't have time that I choose to spend watching TV. I choose to invest it in those other areas instead. So I don't really have an adaptation to uh, answer this question. Favorite content you've created this year? I think what I have enjoyed the most is just figuring out an upload schedule that works for me that I can actually stick to and be consistent with. The most beautiful book you've bought this year? I think it would be Ripe by Sarah Rose Etter. I think this cover is really stunning. It is a pomegranate, but it looks like teeth as well. So it's kind of got the monster in there and I don't know. I feel like it suits the tone of the book really well as well as being just like a beautiful art piece. And the last question is, what do you need to read by the end of the year? The things that I'm focusing on for the end of the year are continuing to read from my own shelves and getting up my percentage of um, diverse authors that I read from. And that's really about it. I don't have like specific books that I'm aiming for that just have those general goals. In terms of tagging, I tag any of you who are interested in doing this tag and if you don't want to post your own video on it, go ahead and answer the questions in the chat. Let me know your answers to these questions. I would love to know. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want. And if you just want to leave me an emoji to let me know that you're here, go ahead and leave me any kind of fruit emoji like a pomegranate. And until next time, make sure that you continue to read good books, drink good coffee, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye!